What's going on guys? Welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. So today we're working on CB550. Shouldn't be a surprise, but what we're going to be doing to this bike is upgrading the electrical system. So I built this entire bike on the channel a couple of months ago and the um, new customer bought it and wants the electronics switched over to a Moto Gadget M unit uh, before they pick it up. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to be removing all of the factory wiring, uh, which in this case was recently replaced, but we're getting rid of that uh, wiring harness, a lot of the kind of fuses and flasher relays and a lot of those components and uh, putting it all into an M unit. And I'll show you guys exactly what that is if you're not familiar, but it's basically going to allow us to add a bunch of functionality as well as uh, clean up and simplify the wiring quite a bit. So let's dive into it. So before we get started, let's uh, do a quick overview of the components we're going to be using. Part of the system, of course, is the M unit itself. If you're not familiar with what these are, it's uh, from a company called Moto Gadget. And basically, it's going to replace a lot of our factory components with this super compact, like solid state um, you know, module, I guess we'll call it. And what that's going to allow us to do is simplify everything and then it's also going to add a lot of cool uh, kind of customization we can do for example you can change your turn signals to you know flash super rapidly fade in and out slow um, you know lane switching where you hit the button and it flashes three times and automatically turns off stuff like that it allows you to simplify some of the wiring you can run like a tail light and a brake light off of one wire uh, there's some built-in functionality for like alarms for example it's got an accelerometer in here so if you have this mounted in your bike the bike you know is off and the bike senses that it's moved somebody you know stood it up or knocked it over or whatever it can uh, start to honk the horn flash the lights uh, this is the m unit blue meaning it has bluetooth built in so it can actually bluetooth to your phone um, I think that alarm functionality can even notify you on your phone that your alarm's going off, your bike's been moved. Uh, the Bluetooth also allows you to go through and change a lot of the settings uh, through the app as opposed to the M unit basic where you have to use a grounded wire to kind of go through here and a little bit more like rudimentary menu system to change the settings. You can still do it. Uh, it's just a little bit harder without being able to use the app. So this is also going to simplify the fact that we're not going to have to have all the fuses we have on a stock bike for headlight and signals and all the different systems. The uh, relays are built in, so if you have a short, it will automatically shut the power off for that circuit, and it will actually light up a little LED next to you know whichever circuit has the short. And every time that this is power cycled, it will turn it back on. So if you're out riding somewhere, your you know wire rubs through and develops a short, it will shut that circuit off so you're not you know causing any fires or any wires melting or anything like that you can look at the m unit and say oh my left turn signal is what's shorted go through find the short power cycle your bike and you're right up and running again you don't have to go look through and carry replacement fuses and that kind of stuff so it really does simplify um, a lot of the wiring and then also allows you to kind of have some modern functionality uh, in a classic bike we're also going to be utilizing one of uh, Revival Cycle's wiring kits. So they sell these on their website. I'll throw a link in the description below for both the M unit and their wiring kit. I highly recommend this because there is multiple different colors of wire. This is also really high quality um, wire. And if you were to buy a spool of every different color, and you're talking about hundreds of dollars just for the wire on the bike, uh, where you only need, you know, three feet of wire per color, it's kind of silly to buy a whole spool. So I go through their wiring kits. It comes with you know everything. They even have a little instruction sheet of each individual circuit, what color wire to use. Uh, it comes with like a weather pack connector for your main fuse. It comes with these little uh, ferrules you can clip onto the ends of the wire that actually go down into the M unit just to add a little bit of a kind of rigidity to the wire. So it's not going to work itself loose over time. Zip ties, heat shrink, I mean the whole nine yards to uh, wire up the M unit. So I'm really excited to have that. It's going to make it a lot easier instead of... <laughs> you'd be really surprised the amount of bikes I've seen that people have rewired them and every wire on the whole entire bike is red. Uh, which works, but it's a complete nightmare to uh, diagnose if you ever have any problems. So having individual colors for each circuit is smart. It's exactly how a factory wiring harness would be. And that's the idea here is we want this to be 
OEM quality or better. So here's a look at the components we're gonna be replacing. So we'll keep the anti-gravity battery, we're gonna keep the starter solenoid, and we're gonna keep this modern voltage regulator rectifier. Uh, everything else is gonna be torn out. I think we're gonna have to relocate this uh, which is honestly probably a good idea anyway, because if I mount it on the bottom of this battery box, uh, it's gonna get a lot better airflow. I haven't had any issues with these overheating inside, but you know, having a little more airflow over that's not a bad idea. And that's also where we can mount our M unit. We'll get rid of the flasher relay, we'll get rid of a, this main fuse, a lot of this other stuff. The whole new wiring harness will be under the gas tank. And then what I'm really excited about replacing is the complete spaghetti of wiring that's inside this uh, stock headlight. So let me start to pull some of these components off, pull the gas tank off, actually give us access to all the wiring. We'll remove everything we're not gonna use and I'll walk you guys through the process of hooking it all up to the M unit. Got the main wiring harness out, the sub harness, relay, all that kind of stuff. So went ahead and kept the starter solenoid in here. And right now the voltage regulator is still in here just so I can kind of show you guys the wiring that's left because these are all components we're still going to use. So I have main ground wire from the frame that's going to be going to the battery. Really no need for me to replace that. We're just going to add probably an additional ground uh, from the battery to the M unit itself, but getting ahead of myself there. Uh, this is the kill wiring. We have the wire, of course, it still runs down to the starter. Charging system, I'll show you guys how to wire this up in a minute uh, using the regulator rectifier. Up here, main harness is gone. We just have the ignition switch with our little plug, power to our coils, two signal wires to our coils, and the horn. And up in the headlight, I yanked out everything we don't need, and we just have the core components. So of course we have the right side switch, that does our kill switch, start button, and headlight on and off. Left side switch, turn signals, high beam, low beam, and horn. And then the wiring to our gauge, so the backlight, uh, indicator, you know, low oil pressure, all that kind of stuff is here. And then we have uh, the main wire that actually goes to our headlight. So that's the core components, uh, turn signals too, I don't know if I mentioned that. For the back, this used to have individual turn signals and then a center LED. The customer requested that I put in one of these LED strips in the frame, so I did that as well. And our wiring for that is right here. So that's the main core components that need to stay with the bike. Now I'm gonna move on to relocating this and finding our uh, home for the M unit. Then we'll just go kind of circuit by circuit and I'll walk you guys through how to hook it up. Well, I changed my mind. So I was looking at this configuration here. The battery was originally this direction, but I figured out if I turn it 90 degrees, I can kind of snake it right here in the middle. And that gives me just enough room to put the M unit in this front right corner. And then I still got my starter solenoid nice and mounted. This can stay mounted here. Still have my strap to hold my battery in place. I'll make sure the ground is on this side so that my strap and everything, you know, won't end up shorting it or anything crazy like that. And for the most part, this is all the wiring that's gonna be in here because our main harness that's going to be coming to and from the M unit will be going straight out again. So none of that should run through here with the exception of a couple of these wires. I will need to kind of extend and change out the wiring uh, to make everything fit properly, but I think I'm gonna have just enough room to run it this direction. So what I'm gonna do is um, just probably throw some double-sided tape or something to hold the M unit in place for now. Uh, should this configuration work out, we'll uh, properly mount it. Start us off, I'm just gonna do the simplest ones first. So we'll start with battery connection. So we're gonna do a six gauge wire from the positive terminal of the battery to the side of the starter solenoid, just like the factory did. Then we will do another one that's gonna come from that same terminal through a 40 amp fuse to our battery lug on the M unit itself. That's where we'll util uh, utilize that little uh, fuse holder with the weather tight connector that uh, was in that revival kit. So first off, we're just gonna do a little six gauge, short run right here, and then I'll show you guys uh, doing the next one to the M unit. We'll move on to the ground side, which will be super quick and easy and then we'll move on to the slightly more difficult stuff. Now we're ready to move on to our battery cable that's gonna go from that starter solenoid to the actual power of the M unit itself. 
So we're gonna utilize the wire that came in the Revival kit. This is the 12 gauge wire, it's the thickest red wire. Um, I already got one in here to kind of show you what it's gonna look like, but basically cut the length of wire, strip, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch off the end, feed it through the bottom of the plug. It's gonna come out the top just like that. Straighten out a few of our stray wires. Then we're gonna actually crimp on one of these little connectors. And this does require a specialty tool. They have just regular kind of plier style tools. Uh, this one happens to be ratcheting from Matco. Uh, they sell these on the revival kit as well uh, to be able to do this. But basically it has two different sections. One grabs onto the insulation of the wire. The other actually grabs onto uh, the copper on the inside. We'll kind of place this in here. Just like this. And we'll be able to put our wire in, making sure that everything lines up, and then crimp it down. So part of it's holding on to the wire, part of it's holding on to or the insulation, the other part's holding on to the copper. Give it an extra little run through just to make sure everything's pinched down nice and tight. And then we can orientate this the right way. Just like this, pull it back down. Little click, clicks in place. We can slide the little weather connector back up in there as well. And that's it, this thing is made. So our little 40 amp fuse will go right in there. And then this is just a little clip on cover. Keep everything nice and watertight. So now we can put little ring terminals on either end. Again, one going to the starter solenoid where we just connected the battery to, the other going to the BAT or battery lug on the M unit itself. Now that we got the main fuse in place, the next connection we're gonna make is our charging wire. So out of the voltage regulator rectifier, there's this solid red wire. This is the 12 volt uh, DC, I, I'm gonna call it a charge wire. And that's what we need to loop into our positive side of the battery so that we can actually have a functional charging system. So luckily, this is pretty easy to just depin from this connector. I'm gonna cut this blade terminal off, switch it out for a ring terminal, and it's at the perfect length to wrap around and connect right here to the same connector. And then of course that will be fused through this main fuse as well and uh, should act as a really good place to uh, connect into our charging system. After that, we will move on to, I believe, the ground side, and then we'll start to run some individual circuits. So I'm gonna go ahead and create myself two ground cables now. One from the negative side of the battery to the ground lug on the M unit. The other is gonna replace the ground wire that goes right here to this rear engine mount, and that's with the full kind of chassis ground. And I'm gonna actually run it up to that same grounding point. And then later on, I'll show you what I'm gonna do with this grounding lug on the back, uh, basically gonna give us a nice kind of place to pull universal ground from. Uh, but I'll, again, I'll get to that later. So right now I'm just gonna use this six gauge black wire, make up two cables to hook to our ground side. Next wire I'm gonna hook up is for our key. So the M unit knows when to turn on, when to turn off. So we're gonna need a battery reference. So we're gonna come right off the battery port here with some more of the red wire that was in the revival kit. Put a ring terminal on it, run that up. It's gonna follow along with the main harness, but right on a 550, the key is right here. You could really put the key anywhere on the bike you want. You run the wire to it, and we're looking to basically have two of these wires connected when the key is in the on position, and then disconnected when it's in the off position. So I happen to know, just because this is a classic Honda and I work on them all the time, red is battery in, black is switched on power out. So basically the red wire I just talked about is going to be connected to, yep, you guessed it, the red wire right here. And then just to keep the colors matching, we're gonna connect a black wire to the black and run it back to our lock uh, input on the M unit. To do that, I'm actually gonna utilize a factory style connector. I'll throw a link to these. Uh, but I like to kind of keep the OE look and feel of the wiring as much as possible uh, just for cleanliness. 
So I have the opposite side, you know, the female side of this connector. I can put new spades in here. We're only gonna utilize two out of the four. And then this will actually just be plug and play, and click right in there. It'll get zip tied out of the way somewhere around here under the gas tank. And that'll be just a nice clean way to hook up our key. And that will tell the M unit when to turn on. We're actually going to be hooking in another wire to that lock position as well. Uh, but I'll get into that whenever we get into the charging system. It's the next morning where we left off, if I'm not mistaken, was key on power. So we have power running to one side of our switch. When it's in the on position, it comes back and it comes out of this black wire. So you have a couple of options here, but I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. Typically this would just go straight into the lock position on the M unit itself, which is the very bottom terminal on this left side. But I'm gonna do something a little bit different because what I need is a really good voltage reference signal for our voltage regulator. That's what this black wire is for. So this is telling the voltage regulator how much you know, voltage is in the system so it can modulate how much is coming out of this red wire and actually charging. The whole point of upgrading this with a lithium ion battery is so that you're not pumping 15 volts into a lithium ion battery, having it overheat. They're designed to charge slower than a standard lead acid battery. So I want to maintain that for obvious reasons. So there's two ways to do this. One is the way that I'm gonna do it, just because I am not sure if there's any voltage drop coming out of the auxiliary um, outputs on the M unit. So there are two, or possibly on this unit, three outputs for auxiliary, which is kind of key on power. It puts 12 volts out of that. What I don't know is if that's a flat 12 volts or if that's directly battery voltage or if there's any kind of modulation to that. And I don't want that interfering with my charging system. So I'm gonna do straight switched key on 12 volt power uh, using this same black wire. How I'm gonna do that is using one of these little, I'm gonna call it a device. This is basically just a spot for four wires to go in and it's nice and sealed, has a metal bar with a clamp on it on the inside. And it just allows you to kind of stick in four stripped wires right in there. They're all gonna be connected together in a little tight package. It's very similar to these WAGO style ones. This is what was sent in the Revival wiring kit. I actually prefer this style. I haven't used it before, but this style, if you can see, you can flip up one of these little orange tabs, stick your wire in there and close it. That's a nice tight connection. It also lets you flip it back up and pull that wire out. These are like a one-time use. Once that wire is in there, it is very difficult to pull out, which is a good thing if you don't need to pull it out. If you need to get it out of there, you pretty much have to cut it and replace it. But these things are super cheap. Uh, you can buy them for like, oh, it's like $4 for like a hundred of them. So I'm gonna utilize this and basically we'll have black wire into there, a black wire into here, and then one more black wire that comes out and goes into that lock. Um, pin on the M unit itself. That will give us nice key on power. Got the wire from the switch and the wire from the voltage regulator in here. This is the little wire that's gonna go into the lock thing. Before I stick it in there, you could just stick this right into the M unit. That's kind of how it was designed to work. But what you can do is like the next step above is use one of these. And this is called a ferrule. I think I'm pronouncing that right. And basically what it is is like a little metal tube with a shoulder on one side that you can slide over the wire, just like that. And then you use a special crimping tool. These are not very expensive. Revival's got them on their site. They're available a bunch of different places. And then you can squeeze it. What that's gonna do is crimp on this little metal connector. And that just gives you a much more robust place uh, to stick in here. And that way, like little vibrations and movements in the wire, you're not just holding on to, you know, eight or 10 little copper wires, you're holding onto this nice strong piece. We'll use a little flathead screwdriver to push down our little green button and stick it in. Just like that. And we can kind of tuck this down out of the way. You know, we'll do some nice cleanup with our wires and zip ties and all that kind of stuff later, but just to get it out of the way now. So that's it, that's got our nice lock Button done, we can move on to, let's go ahead and take care of the rest of the charging system. So I'm gonna do my best to explain this uh, to the best of my knowledge and as clearly as possible. So there are 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wires coming out of the voltage regulator rectifier. So three of them are going straight down to our stator. The white and one of the greens originally went down to our field coil, both of which are down here on the left side of the engine behind this little case. And that's what this main wire coming out of the engine is. You can see I've depend it to have access to all the wires individually, but we have our three yellows and these actually don't really matter what order they're placed in. Then you have our white, and then we have a solid green, which is actually just the ground for the field coil. So that's how it used to be plugged in through a sub harness. The other two wires in this are for our neutral light and our low oil pressure switch. Um, so those two switches are here as well. We're not gonna worry about that for just the next few minutes. So what we need to do is have a nice solid ground for both of the green wires coming out of the voltage regulator rectifier and the one going down to the field coil. So what I'm gonna utilize is another one of these little wire connectors I just talked about. We can have these two green ones into here. I can you know, add a length of wire or figure out how I wanna get this green nice and up into the battery box itself. And then since this is such an important piece, I'm probably going to run a dedicated ground wire straight off one of the grounding lugs on the M unit straight to this as well. So we'll have all four of these positions taken up and that'll be a nice straight from the M unit clean ground source for the field coil, the voltage regulator rectifier, and should work pretty well for us. So that'll also give me the opportunity. I can probably cut these wires down like, you know, to a third of their original length and I can just have all the connections kind of live back here. That way we don't have tons of unnecessary wires running all over the place. After I do that, we will work on a way to cleanly extend this plug. I'll probably run our white in here as well, and we'll run that down utilizing some more of these OE Honda style plugs. That way it's a nice clean look and we have actual connection from our stator into our voltage regulator. I hope all that makes sense. Um, if you have any questions or anything, just drop a comment below. I'll try to answer as many as I can. Or of course, the guys at Revival, like I mentioned, have uh, tons of tech support and uh, those technical articles available as well. Voltage regulator rectifier is all set up. You can see my little extension harness right here. So that little plug plugs into right there. We still have our two you know, oil pressure and neutral light that need to run up to the gauge uh, to hook up. We're gonna just do that with a similar style connector to this. We'll just do a two prong you know, on one side, two on the other side, and then we'll run the wire and just have it right here. It's gonna run up with our main harness, which of course is yet to be made. That plugs in there. This is just an extension to plug right into the harness that was originally with the voltage regulator. And then we have our four grounds with a dedicated ground wire that's gonna be running to this little ground lug right there. And that's it. Uh, to clean it up, I do use some of this 3M, uh, what do they call it, friction tape? I've always called it Tessa tape, T-E-S-A. Here's a little look at the package. But it's just like really good. It's kind of a cloth tape. Uh, it's really high quality. You know, 3M makes a good product. And then it's a nice clean look. It looks like a OE kind of wrapped harness, something you'd find in a modern car, uh, which is obviously what we're going for. So the next connection I'm gonna go ahead and make is the starter solenoid. So this is gonna be from the output side to this yellow with a red stripe. That's gonna actually activate our starter solenoid, the black wire in this case is going to be ground. So what I'm gonna do is actually ground this just straight to this other lug. So I'll just put a small ring terminal and it will connect right back there. Then this, I'll pull it off. I'll put on one of those uh, little furls, ferrules, I mean, I'm, some day I'm gonna learn how to pronounce it. And then it's just gonna go actually go right into the start terminal right there. We don't even have to make a new wire or anything. It's got room to fit. Uh, and of course, that's just for the output. We're still gonna need the signal from the start button to activate it, but we'll move on to that here in just a little bit. So I'll knock that out. That'll have our starter solenoid wiring done. Then I think we're ready to actually move up a little further up the bike. And I'll show you guys what we're gonna do to have uh, switched kind of ignition on, be able to utilize this factory kill switch because it's a little bit different than what they're gonna show you in the M unit manual. So I wanna show you what's specific to this bike to keep those stock controls. So what I wanna do is have a nice clean ground all the way to the coils and then into the headlight. Because if you're not familiar with M units, 
they are ground controlled circuits. So what I mean by that is the M unit is looking for a ground signal on every one of these inputs besides that lock that we put this key on power to. Every other one is looking for a ground. So when it sees ground on the left turn signal, it knows to send power out of the output to the turn signals and so on. So we need a really good clean ground signal and there's a couple of ways to do that. What I'm gonna do is run off the ground lug of the M unit up to the bolt in the front part of where the coils mount. This is where there's a, actually a big factory ground. So that's gonna be a nice place to not only ground the coils, but also add an additional frame ground. And then I will run a, another ground wire from there up into our headlight. And that's where we can start to branch the ground out via our little wiring connectors I showed you guys already. And that'll give us a nice good place to get ground for each individual circuit that we're gonna connect from the handlebar switches. So right now I'm just gonna make like a, you know, two foot ground wire with basically a eyelet or whatever you wanna call it on each side, ground lug to this. Same thing, another eyelet from that into the headlight. Okay, we're moving on to the handlebar controls. This is the first circuit that is uh, unique to this bike. So this is not something you're gonna find in the M unit manual. It's, I don't even know that it's in any of the revival manuals either. It's uh, very much specific to this. So that's gonna be the kill switch. That's what's actually gonna kill the power to our ignition coils to turn the engine off. So the way a Honda kill switch works, it's got three positions. The two outermost positions are off, which means that circuit is just open. There's no connection whatsoever. When the switch is in the center, that means there's a connection between the two wires. And on a factory system, what that's doing is taking key on power to one side, and then when it's in the center position, allowing that key on 12 volts to come out the other side of the switch and go directly into our black with a white stripe. There's one on each coil. That's giving us power. When we break the connection, cuts the power to coils, cuts spark, turns the engine off. So far so good, except for with an M unit, what the M unit is looking for is a ground signal, like I mentioned a little while ago, to turn off the ignition output, to cut that power to the coils. With this style switch, we can't send ground when the switch is in the off position. The only time this switch has any kind of continuity is when it's in the run position. So if I just wire this up to the kill uh, input on the M unit, it would kill the bike when it's in the run position and it would run when it's in the off position, which is the exact opposite of what we want. So what I'm gonna do to get around that is I'm actually not gonna utilize the kill input on the M unit at all. I'm gonna take the ignition out from the M unit, run that up to one side of my kill switch, exact same wire that uh, the factory system would have used. When it's on the on position, it's then gonna transfer that power out of the other wire and run down to our ignition coils. So that's a way for us to utilize the factory kill switch um, going around the kill that's built into the M unit. And that's how we're gonna do it. So I'm gonna hook all that up. Let me show you guys real quick how to determine which wires to hook this up to if you're not familiar with that process. So me being super familiar with these bikes, I know a lot of these color wires just off the top of my head because I've wired so many bikes. But say you have no idea, you know, which wire you wanna connect to. Uh, option one, go to the wiring diagram and you can look that up and it's pretty easy to find. But the absolute foolproof method is to use a voltmeter. We got it on continuity, so it'll make a little beep noise whenever there's continuity between these two. So we see, so you guys can hear that beep. So we're looking for, this is the wires that are running to our ignition, our kill switch over here. There is a black with a white stripe and that's the exact same color that it is on the coils. That should be a good indicator that that's one of the wires we need. So I can connect one to that. Now what we're looking for is the wire that has continuity only when that switch is in the center position. So we'll put it in the center position. Nothing on that one, nothing on this one. Now if we try the solid black, we have continuity there. So if I do this, I can check that it's gonna work. If I move this kill switch into any other position, it should stop. Put it back in the run position, run. So what we're gonna do 
is take the ignition out from the M unit, run it all the way up to this solid black wire. Then we can run out of the black with a white stripe, go to a T and to our two power wires on our coils, and that is kill switch done. Moving on to arguably the most complicated circuit on the bike, just because of trying to utilize all the factory switches and not have any switches that don't do what they're supposed to do, everything works as it should. Uh, it, it's a little bit complicated for an M unit setup. So let me try to walk through it as kind of simply as I can. It's the headlight circuit that I'm talking about. Basically with an M unit, if you're just wiring it with a momentary button, it's nice and simple. You hit the button once, it uh, turns on the low beam, you hit it again, high beam, click and hold it, it will turn off the circuit. Boom, done deal. You can also utilize the auxiliary uh, one uh, output to run your tail light, your gauge light, that kind of stuff as well, because the aux one stays on depending on, you know, regardless if it's in high beam or low beam, which of course you want your tail light and gauge light to stay on in that scenario. We can't use any of that because we have an on off switch on the right side of the bike that would typically turn on and off the headlight. And on the left side of the bike, we have the switch that determines low beam or high beam. So what we have to do is use kind of one configuration of the M unit and some of the functionality of the stock switches, somewhat similar to what we did to the kill switch to make this all work. So let me kind of run through everything. We're gonna utilize the on off switch on the right side of the bike to ground out our light input on the M unit. So common ground to one side of the switch, other side of the switch straight into the light N on the M unit. We're going to utilize a configuration on the M unit, which is configuration C, that basically is going to say, hey, when this circuit is grounded, turn on our high beam. When this circuit is off, keep it on low beam. We're gonna use that functionality to actually turn on and off 12 volt power to our headlight. We're not gonna care high beam, low beam, it makes no difference to us. Basically all we're wanting is when the switch is in the on position, our high beam circuit, our high beam output of the M unit is 12 volts. When the switch is in the off position, the high beam output is off. That means we can take a wire from the high beam output, run it up to the headlight, and run it into the brown wire on our uh, high beam, low beam switch. So this now becomes the input power. This is just 12 volt power, only 12 volts when the headlight switch is in the on position. And then based on if we're in low beam or high beam on the switch, it will either send power to the low beam circuit, which is the white wire, or the high beam circuit, which is the blue wire. That's what's gonna actually get us our high beam, low beam switch. Nothing in the M unit is gonna change that. All the M unit is doing is seeing ground, turning on the high beam circuit, not seeing ground, turning off the high beam circuit. That's the functionality there. White is gonna be very simple. It's gonna go straight to our white on our headlight. Blue is gonna split. It's gonna to go to our high beam on the headlight. It's also gonna to go to our high beam indicator in our gauge. So that's gonna allow us to actually use the gauge um, indicator light to bright up, you know, light up blue when the high beam is on. Speaking of our gauge, we will need to have power to the backlight and also power to our tail light only when the headlight is on. So we're gonna utilize that same 12 volt switch power that's coming in and it's gonna basically split again. So it's gonna come from the high beam output of the M unit and then it's gonna, part of it's gonna go into the input for that switch. The other part is going to go into power for the backlight, power for the tail light, I hope. Really hope that makes sense. It's taken me a little while to figure this out just because of the kind of configuration we're having to use here. So I really hope that that all makes sense. Um, I'll walk you guys through how it works again once everything is hooked up, but that's the, the basis of it. Last connection on the right side is gonna be our kill switch. This one's super simple, two wires. One goes to common ground. The other is gonna to go to our start input on the M unit. That's literally it. It's grounding it when the button is pushed. Otherwise, it's disconnected. Nice and simple, I'll do that real quick. Then we'll move over to this side. The horn is gonna be super simple. Uh, basically the same setup we just talked about for the start button. Uh, with the added, we're gonna to need to actually run uh, the power and stuff, the outputs to the horn itself, but we'll worry about that in a minute. And then the turn signal is one that's 
Uh, pretty simple as well, but I'll walk you through it because I want to utilize one of my diode kits uh, so that we can retain the uh, turn signal indicator light within the gauge, but we'll get to that here in a minute. Moving on to turn signals now. So turn signals, three position switch, like I mentioned. The center pole is basically going to be the ground, and that is the gray wire. I just double checked it. Gray is the wire that typically comes from your flasher relay, but of course we don't need a flasher relay because it's built into the M unit itself. So that's going to go to our common ground circuit. And then to keep all the colors matching and stuff, I am going to continue to use the orange and the sky blue. If I'm not mistaken, orange is left side, sky blue is right side. So the orange and the sky blue are grounded based on which position that turn signal indicator runs to. So all we need to do is run two wires to the back to the M unit for one, the input for the left side, one, the input for the right side. Of course, just making sure you get the colors correctly. That's what's gonna trigger our turn signal circuit. Then we'll have an output from there. I've already run those wires. I utilize the wires out of the factory wiring harness to keep all the colors accurate. And also because this has a multiple uh, bullet connector end on it. The reason why I need more than one is we're gonna connect one bullet connector from our turn signal, obviously. The other one is going to go into our turn signal diode. So I do sell these on my website. Basically, power for one side of the turn signals goes into one red, power for the other side goes into the other red, and then it just comes out of the white wire, and that's what's going to run up to our turn signal indicator. That means the indicator will turn on um, for both sides without transferring power to the other side. I've explained that a bunch of times, but basically this is gonna allow us to have one LED turn signal indicator that flashes regardless of if the left side or right side is on. Hopefully that all made sense. I'm gonna run through and hook it all up. Turn signals are all done. Uh, next up is going to be the horn. And mine the setup's a little bit different because I'm using clip-ons that are painted, which means I had to run a dedicated ground into my switch. Normally these just ground through the handlebars. So if you have a factory you know, handlebar, your uh, ground button is already gonna be grounded on one side, and then the lightish, lightish green color is going to be a ground signal. That's exactly what you need to uh, send to the M unit itself. Um, my scenario, like I said, is a little bit different. So I just ran a dedicated ground wire into the housing, grounded it. I have that hooked to common ground. Now everything else is the same. So I'll just run this back to the input for the horn button. Then we'll have an output for the horn, which will be power and we'll need to run that up to the power circuit of our horn itself and then ground the other side. These horns uh, actually doesn't matter which way is which. Um, so I'll ground it probably off of the same stud we use to do our common ground right here. And then all I have to do is run that 12 volt uh, power from the horn output of the M unit right to either one of these wires like I mentioned. And then we're done with all of that and then two things left inside the headlight are our neutral and our uh, low oil pressure light. I'll show you guys those in a sec. We're on the home stretch here. So last thing to do in the headlight is the neutral and oil, low oil pressure light. So those lights are both controlled by ground circuits. Uh, the ground switch is actually in the side of the engine. So what we need is a common power, which on the M unit, there are a uh, couple of options and you can actually program it based on when that power comes on and off. Um, so I have it hooked up to the, what is it, aux 2 or aux 1, let's see, aux 2, which is programmed right now to be on anytime the ignition is on. So it's basically a key on 12 volts. So I have a wire running up. I'm using the Wago uh, lever nut to create basically a place where I can connect up to uh, five key on power circuits. So this could be used to do heated grips or whatever else you would want in the future. So I have my power for those two lights going into there. And now I just need my signal wires. So I have a red and a green. Red's oil pressure, green is neutral light. And the factory wiring is right next to that connector we, we replaced earlier. So what I'm gonna do 
is use this little two wire connector and I'm gonna do that back there, run the two wires up to here and then there's nothing else we need to hook to the M unit for this. It's being switched by, you know, the switch on the side of the engines. Moving on, we are on to brake light circuit. So on this particular bike, I have a master cylinder that's got a switch built in. So when you pull the front brake, it connects it. Should be pretty simple. Blade terminal to ground on one, blade terminal back towards the M unit. We are then gonna need to tie that in to one of the wires from the rear brake switch because we want the brake light to come on whether we're using the front or the rear brake. So this is gonna be the same thing. Ground on one side, tie it into that same wire that's coming from the front, and then that's gonna run into the input for brake. And then of course, the output is going to go to the brake light. I went ahead and did that already. I have one of these little integrated LED tail lights. Uh, so it's a little bit different than what you guys are gonna have, but it's super self-explanatory. The outputs are literally left turn signal, right turn signal, um, brake light, and then tail light. And then there's a ground wire. So ground it off the terminal, and then it's literally brake, tail, you know, it's it's not a not a huge deal. So the tail light's gonna run off of the high beam output, which if you remember is now basically just our power for the headlight, regardless of if it's high beam or low beam. So that means anytime the headlight's on, the tail light's gonna be on, and then brake and turn signals are exactly, you know, what you would imagine they would hook up to. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna knock out those two, and then we're ready to kind of finalize putting in the actual battery cables and throw in power to this thing. I'll show you how to configure um, the different settings and then we'll cross our fingers and start to test everything. Should be good to go. So we need to change our configuration. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna walk you through while I'm doing it, um, but it's something that it's gonna be a little bit different per setup for your setup. So what I'm doing is changing, there's all the different programming options. I'm not gonna go into them right now, but it's about how the M unit reacts when you, um, let me turn the key on yet, how the M unit reacts when you set, um, you know, when you hit a button, when you double click something, there's all those different variations. So I need just to change the handlebar controls to configuration C. It's like A, B, C, I think maybe D and E. So C is gonna be the third one down and you use a little indicator light. So to do it, I hold the horn button down, I turn the key on, it's gonna run through its startup sequence and then I'm in basically the menu settings now. So on the left side, the number one LED is flashing and then on the right side, the number three LED, or um, the number one LED is on. I need to click the horn button until we can go Get back to, okay, number one, click and hold. Now, see, A, B, C. Now I'm on the C configuration. I click and hold the horn button again. Now we're back to the main menu. I think that's all we need to change. So I can turn my key off, cycle it. Now, in theory, the programming should be what we want. We can still adjust things later on and I also need to connect the Bluetooth app which you can do all this through the app as well. Uh, and that's where we can start to change our flasher speeds and set the alarm and all that kind of stuff. So turn the key on. Okay, shows the only thing on right now is our aux 2 which means our neutral and oil light should be on and they are which is perfect because obviously low oil pressure with the engine off and we are in neutral. Um, the ignition is on, so if we turn the bike, yeah, okay, cool. So that should be good. Let's start to test stuff. Let's just go left turn signal. Oh, we got left turn signals front and back. And the indicator going to the right turn signal. Ha, <laughs> got right turn signal and the indicator. Uh, hold your ears, we're going for the horn. Beep. Horn works. Um, okay, let's try the headlight. So, headlight on. Headlight comes on, tail lights on, gauge is on. 
Okay, so now if I switch to high beam, should switch the bulb to high beam and I should get my indicator on as well. Bulb on high, indicator light, ah, tail light still on. Dope. So our uh, headlights and everything work exactly like you would expect them to. Hit the off switch, they turn off, tail lights off. Uh, let's go for a brake light check. Got brake lights there. Got brake lights there. Shoot, man, this thing works. Uh, I don't want to start it right now. I'll start it tomorrow, but let's make sure it turns over. So I'll turn the ignition off, hit the start button. Works like a charm. That's it, people. This thing works. One more thing I can't remember if I showed you guys, but for the wiring for the points, the wire that comes out of the engine is actually long enough to just be kind of zip tied right up the front frame rail here and go right to our yellow and blue right by the coils. So you don't actually have to change any of the wiring. You just reroute the way that it runs. So pretty sweet. Well, that's it guys. The M unit is installed. So what I'm gonna do uh, tomorrow is just clean up all these wires. I'm gonna zip tie it every couple of inches. I'm gonna use that 3M cloth tape that I showed you guys wrap it up super nice. I just want it to be nice and clean out of the way. It's not going to get caught in any linkage or anything like that. I'm not going to bore you guys with, uh, you know, zip tying wires together. And then we're ready to go. So I haven't actually messed around with that app yet. So I'm going to download that so that I can go through when the customer picks this bike up uh, this weekend, I can show him the app and how to download it and make adjustments and that kind of stuff. Cause there's a lot more functionality uh, to this unit that we haven't gotten into yet. I just wanted to get it up and running and usable, and then you can have fun with all the tweaks after that. So I really hope that this helps you guys if you're uh, changing over your classic Honda to an M unit and you want to utilize your factory switches. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why you would keep your factory switches. One is if you're trying to keep the bike somewhat aesthetically uh, stock, then that's a good way to go. Also on classic Hondas, the right switch is part of the throttle assembly. The left switch is part is actually where the clutch mounts. So you can obviously get you know universal clutch mount, universal throttle, and change it. It's definitely doable. It's just you know if you're adding more and more and more expense. So this is a good stepping stone if you want to switch your bike to an M unit and then maybe later on change up to a different style handlebar buttons. The beauty of the M unit is all that programming and everything is constantly you know updatable. You can change your setup. You can put this on a different bike. You can add and remove accessories and all that stuff is easy to uh, kind of plug and play. So once you get the main system set up, uh, all the rest is gravy. So I appreciate you guys watching as always. Um, make sure to go check out the guys at Revival if you want to get one of these for yourself. And I'll see you guys in the next one.